we are talking about the survival of the country man we have to be honest about the political parties that wants to go into gov into governance with african national congress and we have to be honest about the leadership in those political parties like this is the reason why i said that guys do you think that julius malema can actually hold the ramapos accountable there is no way julius malema is going to hold the ramapos accountable <laughs> man it's crunch time and it looks like the da is starting to be realistic about what's in front of them guys remember last week i did a video <laughs> where i was addressing the supporters of the da i said guys in 2024 you cannot have your cake and eat it you cannot have your cake and eat it the reason why I'm saying that is because some of the supporters of the DA, they don't want to see the DA going into coalition with the ANC. People have actually argued that, Thomas, if the DA goes into coalition with the ANC, it is going to destroy the party. The DA is going to be finished and the ANC is going to corrupt the DA. This is what people have said. This is what the staunch supporters of the DA has actually said that, man, I would rather have the DA as the opposition party instead of these people working with African National Congress. But the same people that don't want to see the coalition of the ANC and the DA are the same people that are saying that I don't want to see the coalition of the ANC and EFF and this is the reason why I said, guys, you cannot have your cake and eat it because one between the two is going to happen. One between the two is going to happen. If you don't want to see the coalition of the ANC and the EFF, you need to be open-minded and allow the Democratic Alliance as an organization to go and form the coalition with African National Congress. If you think that the coalition of the ANC and the EFF is going to destroy South Africa, then you need to be open-minded and allow the Democratic Alliance to go and form the coalition with African National Congress. You cannot say that you don't want to see the coalition of the ANC and EFF, and at the same time, you don't want to see the coalition of the ANC and the DA. One is going to happen. One is going to happen. And the only way to stop the ANC from go from 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 co from going into coalition with the EFF and MK is by DA availing themselves. I mean, like the ANC's Veterans League have already said it, that the DA is a natural partner. If we have to choose between the DA and the EFF, the ANC will choose the DA. The ANC will choose the DA. Most of the senior members of the African National Congress have actually said that we would prefer working with the DA instead of working with the EFF. So if some of the supporters of the DA are going to be mad at the DA working with African National Congress on the national government, then guys, you need to be prepared with that coalition of the ANC and the EFF. And you don't have to complain about everything that you are going to get under the coalition of the ANC and the EFF because it would be exactly what you called for. I mean, right now, the DA is starting to be transparent about what is it exactly that is happening. Because I think the DA can actually realize that the multi-party charter is not going to get 50%. All the polling data has indicated that the multi-party charter is not going to get 50%. So the DA has to look at the second option. And again, the 2024 elections is a unique election. It's not like the, 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 the regular elections where the African National Congress will win in an outright majority. The DA has been running after the African National Congress for over 25 years. These people men, have been running after ANC for over 25 years, trying to expose them, trying to, to, to dethrone them from the governance. And now that the African National Congress is starting to take major hits, do you think that the Democratic Alliance will be willing to, to sit on the side and allow the EFF, MK, or possible IFP to finish the job? Of course, they are not going to do that. If the DA is not part of the political parties that are going to form governance after these elections, then the DA is going to die. There will be no need for the DA. I've said it before that if the African National Congress goes into coalition with the IFP or EFF 
and for some reason they find a way of working well together the da is as good as dead the da will never come back and the da will never govern this country again so i think the da is brave by start, by, by by going out and starting to say that guys we don't want to be in opposition benches forever we want to form governance we want to branch out of western cape we want to take our governance to some of the provinces across the country and there is no way we're gonna do that without the african national congress so i know that some of the of the people from the multi-party and especially kenneth mishri the, the 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 leader of acdp he went to newsroom last week i'm going to play you that video after this video kenneth mishri went to newsroom and said that he is so disappointed at john steinhazen and the democratic alliance for actually saying that they are open to the idea of working with african national congress on a national governance basically kenneth mishra says that if the multi-party charter is going to remain small with their values then let it be let the multi-party charter remain small with their values but i don't think the da is playing the same politics because acdp has been the small party for the longest time acdp has been one of those political parties that we've all that we've always had but we don't we don't actually know their impact or we have never actually felt their impact but this is different when it comes to the da because the da is a major political party so i don't think that kenneth may show wanting multi-party charter to stay there with their small numbers and with their values it is going to work for the democratic alliance of course it's not going to work for the democratic alliance and he was seething he was seething kenneth mishra is angry the national chairperson of action essay michael Beaumont, is angry he even wrote a letter the letter that eventually leaked to the media reminding the partners of the multi-party charter that guys remember we said that we are never going to work with african national congress what happened to us saying that we will never work with African National Congress? Why is the DA talking about the possible coalition of, of, of the DA and, and the African National Congress? But I think the DA is starting to be honest about what is happening in front of them. And they are saying that, guys, we have been fighting the African National Congress for, all, for over 25 years. And now that the African National Congress is limping, there is no way we're going to allow the EFF, IFP or MK to finish, to finish off the job there is no way we're gonna let that happen because we are the ones that have been chipping at the credibility of the african national congress we are the ones that have been warning people about african national congress all this time the eff was only formed like what 10 years ago the da was already running after the democratic alliance when the eff was formed so do you think that the da is going to sit on the side and allow the eff to go into governance the party that was formed 10 years ago whereas these people have been running after the anc for over 25 years i think the multi-party charter needs to be realistic man the multi-party charter needs to be realistic and allow the da to explore the possible coalition between them and the african national congress the multi-party charter needs to be like like they need to be reasonable like some of these parties that wants to finish off the job are parties that were literally started yesterday you look at mk party you look at the eff how do you think the eff the da is going to 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 feel sitting on the side of watching eff in governance watching mk in governance and knowing very well that the party that is in that that is in coalition with these people is the party that we have been warning people about for the past 30 years or so the least that we deserve as the democratic alliance is to go into governance this is the least that we deserve and i like the fact that the da is being transparent with that and saying guys there is no way we want to be op in opposition benches forever we don't want to be in opposition benches forever because if ANC goes into coalition with the EFF and MK, the DA might as well close shop because the DA will be dead. The DA is going to die a slow death. It's going to die a slow death and they will, they will never govern South Africa. Their dream of governing South Africa I mean, will be so far off, it will never happen. It will never happen. So this is do or die for the Democratic Alliance. So me personally, I understand them. <laughs> I understand them i know that you guys signed something you you've made concessions you've signed deals with the partners of the multi-party charter saying that you will never work with african national congress but it was never realistic for the democratic alliance and i don't know how political parties in the multi-party charter do not realize this it is not realistic to say the da must not work with african national congress especially in these 2024 elections these are the most crucial elections especially for the da so the da they want to form the part of governance this is what they want 
they want to form the part, the part of governance and they know that by admitting that we want to form part of governance it is going to 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 to, to, to render multi party charter in uncharted waters but it is fine it is fine the partners in the multi party charter they need to understand they need to understand they need to understand <laughs> The DA has been running after these people, man, for over 20 years. So, guys, this is what the chief whip of the DA, Sivuwe Khwagube, said about the possible coalition of the Democratic Alliance and the ANC. Well, what about you? Um, there's been a lot of talk. When I read the tea leaves, I get the sense that this talk is more serious than maybe any of the parties have let on in public. But maybe you can tell us today, do you think that an ANC, a grand coalition. Um, so, for example, DA Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis um, has spoken about it not being it it being the least worst option, and I think John Stienhazen has also said that. Mm. Um, Snuggy Zagalala from the ANC Veterans League has said, "No, no, the DA is the natural partner." Um, so, how likely is this? Look, I think um, from where I am sitting, I think... Sorry, guys. Let me remove myself so that you can see the chief whip correctly. I'm simply trying to remove myself from the screen so that you can see the chief whip when she speaks. Ne? All right. In the federal executive of the organization, mm. definitely the, the the priority has been to bolster as much as possible the multi-party charter. So we are under tremendous amount of pressure to grow significantly. Obviously, you recall that in 2019, we regressed slightly and lost votes and mm. seats. Mm. And so this past five years has been a lot about how do we consolidate that growth and how do we make sure that we retain our support. Yeah. So we had a lot of pressure to grow. because. And guys, looking at the performance of the DA in the past elections, and looking at the performance, at the possible performance of the DA in these elections, how do you think the DA is going to do in these elections? How do you think the DA is going to do in these elections? In numbers, man, in numbers, can you guys please tell me in the comment section, how do you think the DA is going to do? And so this past five years has been a lot about how do we consolidate that growth and how do we make sure that we retain our support. Yeah. So we had a lot of pressure to grow because also we have to bring our fair of the vote, share of the vote to the MPC. And so our big focus is really trying to put this parties, these parties together, these opposition parties, because for me, that would be the first prize. The first prize is trying to get a group of opposition parties who have already decided on what governance priorities they pursue, who've already decided what principles bring them together. That would be the first prize to put that together mm. and essentially either in provinces or at a national level. And so that is the party strategy at the moment, Cizwe, is to try and either outright obviously retain the Western Cape, um, but also uh, hopefully outright maybe see what we can do in Gauteng and in KwaZulu Natal with some of our partners. And at a national level, the strategy really is focusing on getting an opposition party coalition. I think it would be very difficult and premature even to have a discussion about the ANC and its future because, of course, you know, at the moment we've spent 30 years, um, if you trace the DA's roots back to the DP, we've spent 30 years trying to dislodge this party. And then to now, in the eve of an election, talk about how we would seek to, you know, uh, resuscitate them from their dying, you know, hours mm. would almost seem counterintuitive. And so I think the focus must be to grow the organization. And then, of course, you know, we would go back to our voters and to the MPC after the election to say, look, this is what we were able to do. What's the best course forward? Mm. Of course. I mean, like, <laughs> of course. And the DA has been running after ANC for such a long time. They have been running after ANC for such a long time, and men, and they cannot even fathom the thought of sitting on the side and watching the new political parties in governance, whereas they have been fighting the African National Congress for the past thirty years. Of course, like it makes it makes complete sense. It makes complete sense. <laughs>
<laughs> it makes complete sense. Because right now, guys, we are talking about the survival of the country. We are talking about the survival of the country, man. We have to be honest about the political parties that wants to go into, gov into governance with African National Congress. And we have to be honest about the leadership in those political parties. Like, this is the reason why I said that, guys, do you think that Julius Malema can actually hold the Ramaphosa accountable? There is no way Julius Malema is going to hold the Ramaphosa accountable. There is, there is absolutely no way Julius Malema is going to hold the Ramaphosa accountable. There is no way the EFF is going to hold the ANC accountable. There is no way Patriotic Alliance is going to hold the ANC accountable. The Patriotic Alliance, they do not even have enough influence to influence the African National Congress into the right direction. The EFF does not even care because the EFF is a lighter ANC. The EFF comes from the ANC. So the EFF going back to, to, to govern with the ANC and MK, it's still the African National Congress. And I think the, the Democratic Alliance understands that if the ANC gets into coalition with the EFF and MK party, the African National Congress is still running the, the show because these political parties, they come from the African National Congress. These political parties broke from the African National Congress. So if they come back to the ANC, the ANC is still running the show. So the DA cannot, and like they cannot, they cannot sit like they cannot sit back and 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 and, and fund them. The thought of the African National Congress retaining majority again via EFF and via MK because. Both of these political parties, they come from the African National Congress. So if they go back, the ANC is still in charge. Do you think that the DA is selfish to the multi-party chart? I wish this thing was live, man. Do you think like do you do, do you think that the DA is selfish? Do you think that these people are selfish to the multi-party chart? Because, of course, they've signed the concession said that they will never work with African National Congress. But right now, the DA is saying, no, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no way we're going to allow that to happen. So, it seems to me when I look at the polling data that the MPC is not going to be able to get over the 50% mark. Mm. And, of course, if it does, then we know exactly what's going to happen. And it seems to me as well that the ANC is not going to get over the 50% mark. I continue to believe that. Others say it's impossible, it will never happen. Mm. Um, we'll see. But if we're in a situation where neither the MPC nor the ANC is over the 50% mark, then it seems to me that there are two scenarios presenting the DA. One is that you go with the ANC and abandon the MPC. The other, which people haven't spoken about, mm. which I continue to raise, is that you bring in the EFF to get over 50%. Now, that sounds crazy, and oh my goodness, you're on different sides of the political spectrum. We've seen that before in South African politics. Mm. In fact, Zuma brought in the Freedom Front Plus in many of his cabinets, mm -hmm. and you govern together in Joburg as well. So... Those seem to be the options if you want to govern. Of course, if you if the other option would be to step away and decide you're just going to go into the opposition and whoever wants to form a government can do that. Mm. But I don't think the DA will ever work with the EFF men. I think the DA can, can like they can work on something with African National Congress. But when it comes to the EFF men, I don't think the DA will ever work with the EFF men. I honestly don't think so. And I don't think the EFF also wants to work with the DA. <laughs> I suppose a fourth scenario is that there's some kind of national unity government where everyone comes together and sings Kumbaya. Mm -hmm. um, From GNU. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I put these scenarios to you in the event that you don't yeah. get the 50. Yeah. Oh, look, I mean, again, I think for me, where from where I sit as the DA, having been around for as long as we have, mm. I think we are not interested in being an opposition party forever. Of course. Um, and again, I mean, and, and no, and I mean, and, sure. and, I, and I say this freely mm. without mm. obviously these discussions have to happen in the context of a, a leadership discussion and, it, and that. It makes sense, right? Yeah, but, but I definitely think from where I sit, the, the DA doesn't want to be in opposition forever. Mm. I mean, 
we we want to grow we want to be a party of government we want to be able to replicate what we believe is a good governance record that we've done in the western cape and other parts of the country mm. um and also because we need to break out of the western cape we want to be able to when we talk about our government successes say we've managed to bring down unemployment in kwazulu natal we've managed to you know revive service delivery in Gauteng. Yeah. It becomes important for your brand proposition, right? Where otherwise people start to box you and say, mm, well, mm. your governance record is only mm. here. So it's very important for the DA to break out of the Western Cape. We want to be in government. We want to grow. Um, and so that's why this election becomes one for the election geeks and the democracy geeks. Oh, yeah. It's It's incredibly interesting because um, the next 60 days are about to be wild. Mm. Um, and so we've got that kind it's of... It's going to be a movie. It is going to be a movie. And um, we've got that kind of challenge facing us. Yeah. Um, so if we're able to really, for instance, move towards the mid-20s to th closer to 30s, um, depending on what the voters believe we deserve, um, then we've got a big stake in whatever happens and whatever configuration um, is mm. happening, then we've got a say in that. Sure. Um, I think it would be incredibly difficult for the DA and the EFF to work together in a national government space, mm -hmm. simply because of what I was speaking about, even with the ANC, that, you know, there are there there's seven cardinal pillars that the, a, that the EFF speaks of, yeah. which many of them we are diametrically opposed to. We believe in non-racialism, they don't. We don't believe in catered deployment, they do. Mm. We believe in protecting property rights, they don't. So these things are incredibly important in the national government space. <laughs> but that is the DA, man. That is the DA, man. They don't want to be left behind. They don't want to be left behind, man. And... Kenneth Mishwe, the, the leader of ACDP, went to newsroom last week. This is the video that I was talking about of Kenneth Mishwe going to newsroom. And the man was not happy at all, man, with John Steinhazen and with the direction that the Democratic Alliance is taking. Like It seems like these people, man, are so friendly <laughs> to the idea of working with African National Congressmen. Like, we thought we had a deal that, guys, if we're going to remain small, we're going to remain small with our, our, with, our with, with everything that we have. We are not going to we're not going to sacrifice our morals and our values for governance. We don't want to be in governance by any means necessary. But I think all of these things, man, they don't apply to the Democratic Alliance. Is the multi-party charter on shaky ground following the utterances by leader of the Democratic Alliance, John Steinhazen, who says he did not rule out a possibility of the DA going into some co-governing arrangement with the ANC to avoid what he calls a doomsday scenario. Good evening, Thabo, uh, and thank you very much for consulting us uh, about our response to the letter written by the chairman of Action SA. We agree with him. Of course. You know, when an agreement is made, particularly after what John has been saying, to the public, particularly to opposition political parties. And guys, so what is the position of the IFP in this whole matter? What is the position of the IFP in this whole matter? I mean, you know, yesterday, <laughs> someone said that Thomas, <laughs> the DA was smart to making these people man, believe that no one is going to be working with African National Congress and making these people sign the stipulation that no one is going to work with African National Congress, whereas they know very well that the African National Congressman in 2024 is not going to get an outright majority and they will need to be there offering their votes and saying, guys, we are here to govern the country with you. The DA wants to expand. The DA wants to go to other provinces. The DA does not want to be locked in a box of that. You are a Western Cape political party. You know, they don't want to end up being like IFP because, you know, right now when people talk about IFP, they can only talk about KZN. IFP is hardly visible to other provinces in the country. So the DA is avoiding the same thing that is happening with IFP, the same thing that is possibly happening with MK party because 
if MK gets out of KZN, you will see like ah maybe Jacob Zuma does not have that kind of support. Like, but when he's in KZN, you will see many people going out and supporting KZ Jacob Zuma. So the DA does not want to see themselves in that position. So I'm thinking about IFP. What is the IFP's official position after John Steen Hazen actually said that he will not rule out the possibility of working with Afghan National Congress? I'm just interested to know what is the of official position of the IFP. He did not rule out a possibility of the DA going into some co-governing arrangement with the ANC to avoid what he calls a doomsday scenario. Good evening, um, Tabo, and thank you very much for consulting us uh, about our response to the letter written by the chairman of Action SA. We agree with him. You know, when an agreement is made, particularly after what John has been saying to the public, particularly to opposition political parties, that we must make sure that we do not have an ANC government. We must work together to deny them that opportunity. But for him to be quoted and to behave, saying what he said, that creates instability in the multi-party charter because it looks like he's now working on plan B. It's like the man wants to be in government regardless. If it does not work with the multi-party charter, then option B will be work with A and C. Which but it's unfair to expect the DA not to have the option B. <laughs> it's unfair. It's unfair not to expect the DA not to have option B. <laughs> of course they were going to have the option B. Of course they were going to have the option B. <laughs> of course. They want to be in governance, man. They want to be in governance. They have been the leading opposition party <laughs> for the past 30 years. Of course, they want to form the governance, man. They want to be in governance. Like, the, 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 the chief whip of the DA has already told you, man, that we want to expand as the DA. <laughs> Which we believe is dishonest, disingenuous, and uh, the ACDP is against and opposed to the kind of politicking that he's doing. And um, if he continues this way and he does not want to come out clearly and openly to all the multi-party charter partners clarifying his position clarifying what he said and what he meant the acdp will consider whether to continue with this multi-party charter uh, agreement or not because i mean like <laughs> you cannot have people violating their own charter mm. violating something that they also initiated that fact that none of us who are in the multi-party multi charter should be negotiating and working with the ANC or planning to do that as something to fall back on if things don't go right. Now, we are disappointed, to be honest with you, that he has made such a statement and we are going to be from now on watching and analyzing all statements he made and I repeat that if it can be very clear that he's Moving in that direction, he's making negotiations with the ANC so that the possibility of working with them would become a reality. If we working with the multi-party charter does not work, then the ACD will definitely reconsider our commitment to the multi-party charter. Okay, maybe before we get to, 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 to the doomsday scenario, let me just ask, how are you holding the DA accountable for that statement? Have you sought clarity on that view? We have sought clarity. And we have requested a meeting tonight that did not happen. And in that meeting, this issue was going to be raised. So the next few days, we will pursue the attempts, our attempt to also meet for, so, so that this statement and these uh, movements of him be clarified. He is giving an indication to the public that I am working on plan B. He must clearly tell us what is that plan B because parties like the ACDP have clearly stated we will not work with the ANC because everybody can see what the ANC has been doing the past 30 years in government and we do not want to continue with people or rescuing people who 
Everybody knows who read newspapers that they are definitely declining. We don't want to rescue those who are declining because of their own mistakes and foolishness that they have done. They have failed to do deal with people involved in corruption. When they were saying DA is zero tolerant, has a zero tolerant policy towards corruption. That is the position of the ACDP. We will not allow ourselves to be dragged into a situation where we work with people that are evidently, very clearly uh, part of the corruption we've seen in South Africa. So, <sighs> but I guess right now it's safe to say that everyone in the multi-party charter is on their own. I guess it's safe to say that because if the DA is open to the possibility of working with the ANC after the elections, I can tell you for free that IFP is also having those conversations with the ANC. <laughs> I can tell you for free that IFP is also having those conversations with, with, with the ANC. If the DA is so bold to go out and say that, guys, we are like, we are not scraping that possibility, I'm sure that IFP is doing the same. So why do we still have the multi-party chart? Why do we still have the multi-party chart? Guys, let's break this thing off. Everybody go on their own. I mean, like, ACDP is going at the DA. Action SA, at every single turn, they are going at the DA. So there is no unity there in the multi-party chart. There is no unity in the multi-party chart. How about everyone goes on their own? Because it seems like whatever you guys signed there at the multi-party chart is not working. It's not working because people like Kenneth Mitchell expect the DA not to even have conversations with African National Congress, despite the DA being the biggest opposition party in the country. They know the African National Congress is not going to get an outright majority, but he doesn't want the DA to be there. He wants the DA to sit down, and that is not going to work for the DA. The DA will never allow that to happen. They will never allow that to happen. So why do we still have the multi-party chart? Why don't you guys break off an action essay they can do their thing because right now action essay is already doing their thing action essay is questioning the da maybe then there they are taking the da everyone is doing their own thing in the multi-party chat so guys just break off just break off just break off because these 2024 elections men are like no other there are some political analysts and experts who have said maybe the multi-party charter may have to make some considerations particularly if all of you in the multi-party charter agree that uh, ANC, EFF, MK coalition is undesirable. So let's start there. As the ACDP, do you think that a ANC, EFF, uh, um, is a party coalition is, is appropriate? Well, MK, there's not much you can say about MK right now because they are still, they are still newcomers. Whether they have changed their sports, their colors, we are not sure yet. We'll still see. But we know definitely with the ANC and the EFF, we have been with them for years. We know that the ANC covers corruption, even though they might deny it. And we know that the EFF is very disrespectful to, to authority to elderly people, and we cannot be seen to be working with such people. They have disqualified themselves. As far as the ACDP is concerned, no ANC, no EFF working together or coalition to be more specific. Yeah. So how do you expect, and or, or how do you think that the, 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 the possible coalition of the ANC and the EFF is going to be stopped? You don't want the DA to work with the African National Congress. So how do you propose the DA is stopping the possible coalition of the African National Congress and the EFF because they cannot do it by the votes. They cannot do it by the vote. The votes are not going to be enough. Even with the multi-party charter, the votes are not going to be enough. So how do you propose the DA stopping the African National Congress from going into coalition with the EFF or Mkondovicis? How do you propose the DA does that? You cannot do it by the votes. You need to understand that you cannot do it by the votes. The only way the DA can actually achieve this is by availing themselves. What about the view that if you have, for example, the multi-party charter, or maybe even the Democratic Alliance as a representative of the MPC, might be able at least to, to hold the ANC accountable in, in a collision with the ANC? 
if we failed to hold the ANC accountable or to cause them to stop and distance themselves from corruption and people that are corruption, failing to do that in opposition is also going to fail again in, in bed with them because this seems to be in their blood. <laughs> and if it is in their blood, it is not going to change, is it? There are many people with good morals who went into the ANC saying we want to change them from within. They have not been able to change the ANC from within. What has happened is that ANC has managed to change some of them. So if he comes to such an argument, ACDP will not accept that argument because it will not work. It has not worked the past eight years. Yeah. Action has says, uh, Michael Bowman says in one of the interviews, well, those who want to work with the ANC must leave the charter. I think you've repeated something similar to that. But, but one would say uh, the Democratic Alliance brings a lot of weight to the multi-party charter in terms of their membership that they've uh, 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 garnered in the, in, in the 30 years. So them leaving the charter could leave the charter in in a, in, a, in a vulnerable position if the Charter really wants to, to govern? The Charter would be better for them, or for us, to remain smaller. Man, that is not going to work for the DA. But principle, by maintaining our character of zero tolerance to corruption, and also maintain our integrity, rather than become bigger while we are compromised in this i think like kenneth mishra is saying all of this stuff because like like i said like acdp has been that smaller political party for such a long time that he doesn't mind being where he is he doesn't mind having a small political party that has no influence in south africa he doesn't mind having that but i think it's quite unfair to expect the da to be on the same position as the multi-party charter or as ACDP. I think it's unfair to expect the DA to be like, yeah, it's fine. The NC, they can govern the country with the EFF and MK. It's fine. We are sticking with the multi-party charter as long as we have our values, as long as we don't corrupt ourselves. I don't think, like, it's not working for the DA. It will never work for the DA. The DA has always been a bigger political party. They've always wanted to expand. They've always wanted to show South Africa as a whole that we are a political party that actually has credibility. We are a political party that can actually govern. When it comes to ACDP, ACDP has been one of those political parties that we don't even know what the hell they are doing in, in parliament. It's one of those political parties. We don't even know why you guys are there. We don't know. We, don't, like, we, we, we know nothing basically about you. We only know the leadership of ACDP. We have never had the ACDP doing anything so I think it's easier for Kenneth for Kenneth Mishra to say that yeah we, we would rather remain small as the multi-party charter but I don't think that is what the DA want you had the chief whip saying that we want to expand we want to expand and we want to show South Africans that we can actually govern the country and again I think the DA is looking at the it's looking at the uh, 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 at, at the bigger picture that man eventually the ANC is going to die so someone will need to take over the country when the ANC dies so if the DA is going to sit back and play these games of the multi-party charter saying that we would rather remain small with our values there is no way they're going to they're, they're going to govern the country so I think the DA has made the decision that guys we don't want to die our political party we are not ready for the DA to die and we want to govern South Africa as much as we initiated the multi-party charter thing is not working for us maybe the DA simply needs to be honest and come out and say guys let's break this thing up man da you can go on your own way acdp ifp uim neil de beer we know like you can go your own way because it's not going to happen 2024 elections is about survival man the same time so i would not have a problem if the da leaves with their numbers and percentages i will not have a problem i will applaud those who are remaining who are saying we can rather be small and maintain our integrity and maintain our transparency and our honesty and retain our principles than compromise, weaken our foundation just because we want to be seen to be big in numbers. For me and for the ACDP, numbers are not an issue. People must respect us. South Africa needs respect, leaders that are showing respect particularly to the younger generation, the young people who want to live 
and, and follow people of high moral integrity. And that's what we are trying to do, even as we are in the multi-party charter. And that's one of the reasons why we say we do not want to be involved with the ANC and we do not want to be involved with the EFF because of their disrespect and ANC because of corruption. I mean, we are in Ekuruleni. We know that Ekuruleni is dirty now. We know that um, the even the Auditor General, his report was very slaty. Her report was very, very slaty, was very, very hard and harsh. Why? Because of mismanagement. So in Ekuruleni, we have had a mayor or we have had a finance minister and finance MEC who is from the EFF, and the accounts are not clean at all, the reports are not clean at all. So we have seen what these guys can do, and we are saying we don't want to waste our time with them. Yeah. So for you, I mean, you've men made the statement, but just for clarity, you're saying the, the, the multi-party charter should not pursue to govern at all costs, which you're saying this it feels as though this is what uh, John Sainazen is leaning towards to say they, they will want to govern at, at, at whatever cost. Definitely our advice to the multi-party charter is that if we cannot, while maintaining our principles, our respect, our transparency and other values that we hold dearly, um, if we do not grow while we are holding on to those values and principles, rather, let's remain what we are than compromise and later on become like the ANC. I don't want the ACDP to ever come to a stage where people will be saying they are the same. All right? People must know we are different. It is not becoming part of government at all costs. Not all right, all right, all right, all right. I think Kenneth Mitchell has made his point very clear. Guys, what do you think, man? What do you think about the DA and opening up to working with African National Congress and actually going out to the media and saying, guys, we cannot be left behind. There's no way we can be left behind. You know how long we've been running after these people. You know how long we have been trying to hold the African National Congress accountable and there's no way we're going to allow the newcomers to go into governance whereas we are sitting here. Guys, what are your thoughts, man? What are your thoughts on the multi-party charter? I've already said that maybe maybe it's for the best. Maybe the multi-party charter needs to be broken down. Maybe everyone needs to go on their own. Maybe everyone needs to go and do their own thing. Guys, please tell me what you think on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.